Hey everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Beyond the Mask. In today's instalment, we're going to be discussing the origins of Scream 2's Mickey and what persuaded Mrs. Loomis, aka Debbie Salt, to make contact with him to carry out the murderous campaign she had planned for Sidney Prescott. Little is known about Mickey's backstory, aside from a very few brief lines from Mrs. Loomis and Mickey himself in the final act of the movie. As most of you are aware, I am currently writing a novelisation for the Scream movies, and Scream 2 was one I was eager to dive into. More so because I found Mickey as Ghostface to be extremely interesting, capable and brutal. Before I carry on with the video, I have an update regarding the novels, as many of you have been asking me about their status and so forth. I currently have negotiated a deal with Amazon, who have agreed to distribute the novels via their Kindle app service. Through Amazon, I have been able to reach out to Paramount, who have contacted me requesting copies of the novels, or whichever books I'm intending on releasing for review. With Amazon's backing, I'm hoping for a positive response from Paramount, but at the moment, I'm just providing you guys with little pieces of info with the hopes of expanding some Scream lore. Now that I've updated you all, let's dive straight in. There's a passage in my Scream 2 novelization that allows us some insight into Mickey's backstory, or rather, the moment Mickey impressed Mrs. Loomis enough that she enlisted his help in the ghost face attacks at Windsor College. Before I do reveal this chapter, I have to provide a warning that some of this content is absolutely mature and should be viewed with caution at the moment. Mickey was one of the rare Ghostface killers that was already alluded to be capable of murder beforehand. Mrs. Loomis found Mickey on a serial killer's website of sorts. He would have had to have done something extremely dark for her to assume he was the right man for the job. This is where this chapter kicks in. The girl lay motionless at the end of her double bed. The screaming, the movements, and the struggle had stopped. Instead, she lay with her eyes widened and staring towards the ceiling. Her body twisted unnaturally, and her hair spread across the end of her bed. The wood floor creaked from afar as a shadow approached the girl. Footsteps seemed louder than usual in this bedroom. The cold silence was intoxicating. The shadow leaned down, inspecting the girl who lay before it. A sinister, lingering gaze fell on the girl from the shadow itself. As the thunder began to strike outside, the shadow raised something into the air. A flash filled the room for all but a second. This wasn't the flash of lightning from the weather. This was a camera flash. The shadow flashed the camera once again, as it began producing photo after photo with each flash. The girl didn't move, didn't flinch. The extent of her injuries was still a mystery, yet the shadow appeared to be admiring what had become of her. The photos on the floor were picked up by a black gloved hand, just as the shadow began to fade in the room. Six hours had passed, the police sirens filled the streets from afar, as the body of a teenage girl had been discovered in an apartment block almost four miles from the city centre. In a small, suburban home, a 19 year old boy sat at his desk chair. He was fresh from a shower and sported an accomplished grin as he placed some photos on his own bed. He pulled out a photo album from underneath the bed and begun unfolding the pages. Numerous girls, numerous graphic images were displayed inside the album. He eventually reached one specific girl. She had long, flowing black hair, her skin was almost too perfect, and she wore a Hollywood-esque smile. The boy began lifting some of his photos from the bed and placed them inside the album's empty slots. He gave off a severe laugh, just as he folded the album closed, spun around to his PC, and immediately moved the mouse to boot it into action. The boy began typing in a website into the browser. The results of the search button took him to a dark black website. Nothing but a single white bar was present, requesting a username. The boy began typing, and the page changed. Columns of categories became available on screen. Advice being one, show us what you're made of being another. The boy highlighted the latter category. We arrived at a community discussion, which was littered with replies, responses, and more. The boy began typing. 
she's dead i killed her i know you thought i took a while but i really had to get inside this one's head she was too perfect at everything too interested in being good she really did think i was someone she could confide in she screamed when i was strangling her the ringing still echoed in my ears she tried so hard to get me to stop i kept thinking about what all the great ones did before me the newspapers are still trying to figure out who i am i've decided that next time will be done by videotape instead the photos aren't giving me the adrenaline they used to anyone got any advice for using a camera during the kills for the next hour or so the boy lay on his bed he began contemplating the reaction the girl's friends would have how it would impact them he wished he could see it getting to know her learning her life her wants desires everything that's what made this more fun no one ever suspected him no one would even consider that he was responsible for everything the busy street outside was becoming louder and louder but the sound of an instant message from his pc still managed to reach him he headed over and moved his mouse he'd had numerous responses on the website but he'd received a message a personal one he opened it up and was greeted with a surprising message hello did you hear about the killings in woodsboro california last year said the message who hadn't i mean it was everywhere although he'd had more bodies under his belt than what was committed in woodsboro yes but the halloween ghost mask he replied it didn't take long but a message came once again i hear it's going to happen again want in said the message the recognition he may have had more bodies right now but the police here are fucking useless no one knew anything with one swift response he wrote back i can be depends on the plan you'll know the plan but i need someone who is capable and not afraid to get close to the surviving girl from woodsboro the boy smiled this would be no problem depending on what was needed he began replying before a response hit him first i was billy loomis's mother i think i'm owed my revenge this was billy's mom his mind raced his heart pounded imagine the recognition he could get from this the impact his reputation could get the influence the horror movies had on him the killers that were constantly infiltrating his mind every night the media buzz behind the woodsboro murders was off the scale before he let his thoughts rush away i'm in was his final reply establishing the reason for mrs loomis choosing mickey was an important factor to both their characters mickey had made it public on the illegal serial killer websites that he enjoyed infiltrating the life of his victims this worked out exactly how mrs loomis wanted it his desire to film the murders to get fame and recognition for his hard work as a serial killer was there he would likely have been influenced by the killers like jeffrey Dahmer and john wayne gacy due to the impact their cases had on the world all of this and the fact that mickey absolutely had murdered before the events of scream 2 make him one of the most terrifying ghost faces of all time in my opinion and that's it for this video if you enjoy this content don't forget to like share and subscribe i'll see you guys in the next video until then wait until the trial it is gonna rock